edition of the Next Game Primer. As you can see, we're joined by members of the Nittany Nation here. We've also got David Jackson joining us. DJ, talk about the last week. Can you describe how the team's kind of responded since that Purdue game? Uh, well, last week we had a couple of tough games against ranked opponents in Ohio State and Purdue. And I thought our team really got better during that stretch. Uh, we were able to go out and compete in two hostile environments. Uh, we came up a little bit short, but uh, we got some things that we can build on coming into this next week with two, home, two, two big home games. Yeah, talk about that. Coming back home, how nice is it to have these guys behind you at home game? Uh, it's very nice. You know, we get a chance to really feed off the crowd's energy and, and really play for them and play, get that little bit of boost that we get from playing on our home court. And uh, it's nice to be home at the Jordan Center when we got everybody in our back and we're looking to come out and play well and get us a big win. When you look at Iowa on film, what's the biggest thing that stands out to you? Uh, really, that they they really run the floor and, and push the tempo. They're a team that you know can really put a lot of points on the on the board. I think they scored about 90 in their last game, so it's going to be a tough challenge for us, but we're ready for it. Let's focus in on you a little bit. You had a couple big shots last week. One at Ohio State, the stick back three point play at the end of the game, and then the big three pointer at Purdue. How much confidence does that give you moving forward? Just a lot of confidence. Um, every time I shoot, I think it's going to go in, and and that's key. You know, our coach says, Coach Nessa always tells me, you know, you can't. You can't make a shot that you don't take. So uh, just a lot of confidence, a lot of work that I put in in the summer and in the preseason is really starting to pay off now. What's the key to the game on Wednesday night? Um, the key to the game is definitely uh, transition defense. Uh, they really like to get out and run, and, and they get a lot of a lot of uh, baskets from their big man from running the floor and uh, the guards pushing it. So a transition defense is going to be big and also containing the ball. All right, DJ, thanks for joining us. And we look forward to watching you Wednesday night. Woo! Lewis Preston for another next game primer leading up to the game with the Iowa Hawkeyes. We've got a few visitors with us for this next game primer. Talk about these guys for a little bit. How important is it to get back home with the, the Nittany Nation behind you? You know, I think uh, just speaking on behalf of our entire staff, I think the Nittany Nation has been incredible. Uh, coming back and the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement that they bring to every single game, I think it's given our guys a definite lift and we look forward to having more people come out here on Wednesday night at 630 against the Hawkeyes. Before we get into Iowa a little bit, describe how the team's responded from the, the, the tough stretch of five ranked opponents in a row. You know, I think we've done a, a pretty good job uh, as a whole team-wise. I think the most important thing, we didn't come out with any injuries at all. And, uh, you know, I, I think guys have moved on from the Purdue game uh, specifically, and we've uh, focused our attention now for the Hawkeyes getting ready for Wednesday night at 630. Speaking of Iowa, an 8-11 and 11 team coming off their first Big Ten win, a big win over Indiana, scored 91 points. Describe their tempo. That's kind of the big thing that, that uh, everybody's talking about. You know, one of the things I th think they do a phenomenal job of is changing defenses. Uh, and a lot of that starts off with them pushing the ball in transition. If they're able to get the ball in transition uh, and get baskets, they get back into a variety of different things where there's some three-quarter court uh, trapping. Uh, getting back into man-to-man, -man, playing a variety of different zones. So changing defenses is something they've done a very good job of. And uh, a lot of their start stuff starts off with number five, Matt Gatins, who's their leading scorer overall. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job in his uh, first three years there at Iowa, and uh, he continues to kind of be the anchor for the team. Moving to another key personnel member, Bryce Cartwright, describe what type of player he is, averaging 10.7 points a game and 4.8 assists as well. You know what, I think he's come in and done a very good job uh, for a kid who's a JUCO transfer in, uh, especially when Cully Payne went down with the uh, season ending injuries. And uh, I think he's done a phenomenal job of pushing the tempo for them. He's a very good defender on ball as well as uh, off the ball. Uh, what he does a very good job of is he doesn't really force or rush anything. Uh, he kind of is, is the steady uh, force for that team. Melson Basabi, 6'7", freshman, newcomer to the roster. Two out of his last three games that scored 20 points. Good shooter. Talk about what type of player he is. You know, very athletic, very long. Uh, very active on both ends of the floor. Uh, when he catches it, he's a great face-up player, being, being able to spin off of you and with a variety of moves, getting you up in the air. And he does a great job of drawing contact, has range out to about 18 feet. So for us, it's going to be a great challenge for our post guys, not only to contain him and keep him in front, but not to you know pick up any silly fouls. And then we've got to keep him off the glass. He's their leading rebounder overall. 
touched on the glass. We always talk about transition defense. What do you need to do specifically against their fast-paced offense? You know what? we got to contain the ball. And, uh, you know, when, when we get back in transition defense, we've got to make sure that we get the whole cover. But more importantly, we got to take care of the – make sure we pick up the ball and don't get beat off of, uh, the dribble to where we're, now we're in help and recover situations or kind of in a scramble mode. So we've got to make sure we contain the ball. And then from there, we got to take and build out. Offensively, what types of things are you looking to accomplish? You know what? Uh, just kind of continue along the same path that uh, we've been on. I think we've been uh, a little bit more consistent offensively over the course of the last two, three, four games. Uh, definitely over the last couple games, if you look at our shooting percentages, one's been like about 49 percent, another one's about 55 percent. So we got to keep, you know, making good decisions with the ball. We can't have careless turnovers against this team because they use those to get transition baskets. So, and once again, I'll always talk about my two keys: transition defense, and then we got to rebound the ball. And I think when we do those two things, we've been pretty successful. Talk about the rebounding a little bit over the past four or five games. Don't it, do you, are you happy with the job that the guys have been able to do? I'm never satisfied, to be honest with you. But uh, that's part of being a coach. Uh, you know, after the Purdue setback to where we were out re rebound about 14, we got back on the positive track. And uh, I think one of the uh, big positives after the Purdue game, we had a plus nine rebound and average uh, or advantage over them in that game. Coach, we greatly appreciate your time. Thank you. And once again, thank you, Nick. Nick. joined with Cassie Layton from the Nittany Nation. Cassie, describe a little bit what your group does leading up to Wednesday's game against Iowa. Well, we meet every Monday um, evening, and we just go through the games that are upcoming for the next week. We run through different opponents and things that we really want to work on as an organization. Uh, some of the things we go through, game by game chance, um, we work on 40 minutes, which is uh, kind of like a newsletter we give out to the students. Uh, that helps them kind of read over the upcoming opponents and what, what's going on in Nittany Nation. Uh, we also go through and pick out the big heads that you'll see behind the basket on a, uh, Wednesday night. So we have a lot of new ones coming, so we're really excited about that. That's good to know. Also, I wanted to ask you about the We Believe chant that goes on at the beginning of the game. It originated this year, is that correct? Yeah. Can you uh, talk about that a yeah, little bit? Yeah, we actually saw it at one of the soccer games that we went to. Um, as an Indian nation, we had kind of a combined night with the soccer team, and there was a group of students doing it, uh, and we thought it would be perfect uh, coming into the BJC and kind of making something signature for us. So that's where we really adopted it from, and we're trying to get everyone really on board, and as we go into postseason play, um, hopefully we really want everyone to join on and believe in this organization and this team. Well, can you demonstrate for us? Uh, sure. Ready, guys? Let's do it. I, I, I believe. I believe. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that we will win. 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 Terrific. Very nice job. Very nice job. We'll look forward to that and, and what you guys have in store for Wednesday night against Iowa. Thanks for stopping by and talking to Thank us. Thank you. Woo!